course, talking and Peter uh, talking about, and Peter touched on that a little bit, is the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar really being under fire again at this G8 summit. Uh, there's continued calls for a new global reserve currency. Now, we do know that uh, China has left that meeting to deal with some unrest at home, and they've really been a leader in this push to ditch the dollar. So we're going to talk a little bit about this now. Andrew Goss is the editor of the World of Money newsletter and the author of The Secret World of Money. And Joe Trevisani is a chief market analyst for FX Solutions. So, uh, Andrew, the president just wrapped up a meeting with the Brazilian president, and uh, Robert Gibbs said to the press that the dollar was not discussed, that there wasn't anything discussed with this emerging market as far as uh, the dollar. The Gibbs also, uh, Gibbs also saying that there seems to be no movement towards the dollar not being that reserve currency. Do you think it's really China here that's causing the rumblings for the new global reserve currency? You know, interestingly enough, China has a unique position in that they can keep their domestic currency weak, which makes their export market very strong, while using the dollar that they accumulate uh, from their trade practices to buy long-term resources from the developing countries. So well, China's a China's big economy. I mean, should we listen to them? Uh, I don't think they're serious. Uh, you don't think they're serious about a new global reserve Indeed currency? not. You know, if you just look at the Amero as a, uh, excuse me, <laughs> the Euro, <laughs> and a lot of talk about the Amero, which I don't believe exists, but at any rate, the Euro came about in 1999 when 49% of the world's savings was stored in dollars. Mm -hmm. In the 10 years that the Euro's been on the scene, the dollar has risen to 82% of the world's savings. So the idea that somehow there's a competing currency out there that's going to threaten the dollar's position, I think, is absurd. Well, Joe, at the same time, though, the dollar has lost a third of its value since 2002. So does China and maybe some other countries have a case here for a global reserve currency? Well, there's a, there's a theoretical case. But the, the road from a theoretical idea that you would have a, a world institution that could have a world currency to the practical application of that is so long and sort of bumpy that it's hard to see how it would come about. There are real issues involving the value of the dollar for China and Russia. But do remember, when the dollar was climbing, there was very little complaints sure. or comments that we need a world reserve currency. It's only now. I think it's really more of a comment on the current uh, fiscal policies of the government than it is on any particular approach or realistic approach to really getting a world currency. So then what's the big takeaway? You look at currencies on a daily basis. So a lot of investors look at currencies to invest. You still have these murmurings out there. How do you sure. uh, take them in and then put your money to work? Well, you know, one of the things you do, remember, any time there's a currency trade, there's another side to it. So if the dollar is devaluing, then something is revaluing, something is getting more valuable. It's usually the euro because that's the biggest trading partner. So you always have sort of a perfect hedge or close to a perfect hedge out there in the currency world, you just take the other side of the particular pair. One of the things we've seen is that there has been some movement uh, in currency reserves to the euro and other currencies, and so you have that protection. And they know that as well. This is really something I think that's aimed at the government because there does seem to be, in most, for most economists, certainly for myself, a danger that the deficits that the government is planning will over time seriously devalue the dollar. Well, it's interesting, uh, Andy, as well, that the, China still increases its amount of treasuries. I think over the last year, they've increased the amount of treasuries, despite knocking the U.S. dollar exactly. and some of the policies. They've increased it by more than $200 billion of exactly. those purchasing. So, you know, give us some context. The history of money is something that you look at. How does this play in? I mean, if we're in this period of a somewhat devaluation of the dollar, maybe not over the last couple of weeks, but over this time period from 2002 on, where are we going from here? I think we're going much lower on the dollar, and I think the Chinese realize this as well. So every long-term contract that they can in, enter into paying for those resources, gold, silver, and other things with dollars, means that they're effectively uh, hedging what they've purchased on the, on the dollar bond market. And remember, keeping the dollar strong is in their interest as well as it keeps our exports very expensive. So it's a combination of factors that uh, I think the Chinese have every vested interest in seeing that the dollar remains as the world's currency unit. Uh, Joe, quick wrap up here about gold, because gold was fall, you know, came down yesterday. Sure. Uh, it was, looked like maybe it'll go past the $900 per troy ounce mark. It did not. Right now, this morning, it's up a little bit, 912. Um, there's been talk maybe gold stepping in, a new gold standard maybe. Uh, what do you think about this investment? Well, I mean, gold is, is a good trading hedge in many functions, and that's what it's often used for by traders, by personal people. But as far as it being used as a backstop to any particular currency is um, theoretical, it's fun, 
but I don't think it has any reality to it. You find the plots? In 1964, when I started collecting gold and silver coins, a silver half dollar would buy two gallons of gas. Today, a silver half dollar will buy two gallons of gas. If you want to lock the value of the dollar in over the long term, you must tie it to gold and silver. So you continue to pick up those uh, silver oh, yeah. coins? Absolutely, and I advise my customers to buy them as well. I think gold and silver coins are the only protection against inevitable dollar inflation. It'll be interesting to watch. Thank you both, Andrew and Joe. Appreciate your Thank perspective. You.